Hello my friends, welcome coffee and reaction video channel. I am Mustafa from Turkey. Today I saw a video about coffee and caffeines and I watched that and I want to share this video with you. I think we should watch it together. This is from Science Insider channel and two doctors caffeine will make uh, gonna uh, explain us uh, the coffee and the caffeine. So doctors debunk 13 caffeine myths and watch together okay let's start cup for lost sleep mm. <laughs> caffeine detoxes your body oh please no <laughs> caffeine is addictive Ooh, mm. this is it's a, a good, good one, one. <laughs> Hi, my name is Dr. Sophie Balzora. I'm a gastroenterologist at NYU Grossman School of Medicine. Hi, my name is Dr. Ugre Roku. I'm a gastroenterologist at Mount Sinai Hospital. And, and today... today... And they are cute, by the way. They are cute, doctors. Okay, I like their style. Uh, I first... Uh, I watched this one time um, before reacting, and I really liked their style. Okay, let's continue. Today, we'll, we'll be, be debunking, debunking myths, myths about, about caffeine. caffeine. Caffeine is bad for you. Hmm. Caffeine is not bad for you. So there was a time where I must admit I had bought the hype that caffeine was bad for you. But when you do the research, you find out that a lot of the concerns really don't hold up. There are concerns about caffeine causing osteoporosis. But when you look at it, the amount of milligrams that you need to consume to cause that are excessive of 700 milligrams a day. The amount of caffeine that's being consumed daily is usually on the order of less than 300 milligrams a day. And so a lot of these concerns really don't apply at those levels. There's actually a lot of benefit to caffeine and coffee. So there have been studies showing... Speak girl, speak woman, tell us, <laughs> tell us the benefits, okay. You know, decreasing cancers like colon cancer, head and neck cancers, breast cancer, chronic liver disease, a lot of other kind of inflammatory conditions that we worry about. So chemicals that are able to act upon that and reduce inflammatory processes. And caffeine is one of those compounds that can do that. Three cups of coffee is seen to lower your risk of stroke in certain studies. Tea can do the same by lowering the risk by 20% and also dark chocolate. And in those few instances where your specialist may tell you to cut down on caffeine, whether it's your cardiologist or your gastroenterologist, those are isolated cases, so speak to your doctor. But in general, myth, caffeine is not in general bad for you. Yes. Caffeine <laughs> will make up for lost sleep. <laughs> That's a myth because there is nothing that could make up for lost sleep other than adequate, restful, replenishing sleep. All caffeine does is increase your alertness and make you feel like you're more energetic but it doesn't actually give you more energy. Nature has created an important molecule called adenosine, and that's this molecule over here. And essentially, adenosine tells your brain it's time to go to bed. What caffeine does is to block adenosine's message and keep you thinking that you should be awake. But when the effect of caffeine wears off, the adenosine's still there, and your body will still crash and go to bed. If a person does choose to neglect their sleep and try to replace that with caffeine, they're gonna find that their sleep pattern is just continually affected. They'll have lower levels of REM sleep, and if you drink too close to bedtime, they'll actually have a decreased amount of sleep as well. Ultimately, the brain needs sleep, and you're not gonna get that from consuming extra amounts of caffeine. So this is a good one. So, yeah, um, the uh, basic, they said that, uh, you're gonna sleep whatever you drink or eat. If you are exhausted enough and you are uh, spend so much energy and you feel sleepy, you're gonna sleep, uh, even if you drink coffee or not. But sometimes uh, we have another issues in our life. Sometimes we feel stressed. Sometimes we feel uneasy. So uh, they can feel us uh, not okay. And uh, if we drink coffee in those times, uh, we can. Um, make a link between coffee and those sleepless nights. Okay, let's continue. Decaf coffee doesn't have caffeine. Oh, I've been waiting to do this. Mm. <laughs> Rip it. Myth. Decaf may sound like they completely deed the calf, but it does not mean that. It just means it's reduced. I think by the FDA, formal recommendations are that there should be 95% of the caffeine taken away from a content before it can be called a decaf. 
but sometimes there can be variation from cup to cup to cup. You might see it somewhere on the order of 15 or so milligrams a cup. And again, this is as compared to 80 to like 160 milligrams, depending on the exact type of coffee you're drinking. As a gastroenterologist, if I'm talking to a person who has a lot of acid reflux, sometimes what we want to do is to reduce the amount of caffeine that the person takes, not down to zero. To reduce the amount sometimes does help that person get over their reflux symptoms a little better. It's not zero, but it's a lot less caffeine than typically you would find in that cup. Drinking coffee will stunt your growth. <laughs> so, thankfully, drinking coffee, uh, drinking caffeine, all those things do not stunt your growth. In our tradition in Turkey, uh, parents say their children, if you drink coffee, you don't have mustache. <laughs> okay, that's funny. They, of course, they are uh, saying this for funny way, not serious. But okay, there is some tradition um, in the world. I think um, parents don't feel okay to uh, make coffee, give coffee for their children. Okay. That's interesting. Most of our growth happens during our childhood and adolescence, of course. Ultimately, once bone growth is complete, then there's no stunting of growth that occurs. When you look at the amount of caffeine uh, consumption in teenagers, it usually typically maxes out at about 80 milligrams a day. And any kind of risk to your bones with calcium or magnesium loss, again, usually occurs above 700 milligrams a day. So the kids will be fine. Uh, they're not consuming, in general, enough caffeine to really warrant any concern about calcium loss from their bones. 700, 800 grams a day, that's like at least like eight plus cups of coffee. Yes. This is the most important thing of this video, I think, because I was thinking, what is the 700 or 800? milligrams of coffee uh, as cup measure so this is more than 80 cups in a day <laughs> so i don't think uh, any one of us drink those coffees in a day at least i don't i don't drink coffee more than 80 cups <laughs> okay so this is uh, technically impossible to harm our uh, body while drinking coffee so coffee that's, so it's a lot of, that's a that's a, lot a huge amount. so i mean coffee. the things that affect bone growth the most would be the health status of the kid chronic illnesses or something that causes malnutrition for instance genetics so how tall are your parents how tall are your siblings those are the types of things that really yes. impact growth it's not really going to be caffeine consumption what she said caffeine in soda is much less than caffeine in coffee hmm i'm gonna say that that's a myth I think that what's important to know and I think what people don't really realize is that it really depends on the yes. uh, beverage. There are some sodas that have tons of caffeine, right? Significantly higher amounts than what we consider in an average cup of coffee. You really got to look at that label to see what the caffeine content is. So as you can see here, soda has 40 milligrams in that can of, of cola, and that's uh, greater than your shot of espresso, which only has 27 milligrams. At the same time, it's also less than your black tea, which has 45 milligrams, less than your instant coffee at 82 milligrams, and less than your brewed coffee at 95 milligrams. These are averages, but it just goes to show that soda can just have, have more um, caffeine than some drinks and less than others. Caffeine detoxes your body. Oh, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> One of the more common conversations I'll have with my patients is about this concept of detoxification. They may see something on the internet which promises that no matter what you eat or consume, that if you take this detoxification product, it just takes out all the bad items and leaves you feeling healthy. Unfortunately, it's not that easy. It's better to watch what you're putting in your body before you put it in there than to try to edit it after it's already been incorporated. And so this concept of caffeine as a detoxifying agent is one of them because it can lead to people using it as an enema. Mm -hmm. So that means when they insert fluid into the rectum up to their colon, but it's not safe, it has not been proven, and it could lead to a lot of injury in the colon, burning, perforation even. That is what the kidney's for, that is what the liver's for, that is what your intestines are for, really, is to get rid of waste. If there's one detoxifying agent, it's just water. water. You just want to make sure you're drinking <laughs> enough water so that your bowels are moving, your kidneys are happy, the urine is flowing, the body will take care of the rest. Don't forget to drink water, guys. This is very important. Okay.
Yeah, this is another big question. Caffeine dehydrates you. Caffeine dehydrates you. This is, is one of those tricky ones mm. that's not completely true. Caffeine is a mild diuretic. If you consume about 300 milligrams of caffeine, it might slightly increase your urine output by about four fluid ounces, but that's not a large amount, especially if you think about the fact that a lot of the ways we consume caffeine are filled with water themselves. So yeah. I'm gonna call this myth. Yeah, and if you drink water enough, so there is no problem. Okay. I could not agree more, Ugo. Um, I think that's a huge myth. I think that people can get thirsty after drinking caffeine, especially if you're adding things to the caffeine, yeah. right? Or if there's a lot of extra sugar in that caffeine, then that can make you thirsty. And so it's not really the caffeine itself that is causing that sensation of thirst, but yes. perhaps the additives to the drink um, as a whole. And I think um, the harm thing is additives not coffee itself because uh, i like to drink my coffee black not additives not even milk or sugar i don't like this kind of additives but if you add so many additives like sugar milk some um, syrups this is the harmful things i think okay the other thing is that everyone gets thirsty and so <laughs> you probably just aren't <laughs> drinking enough fluid so a cup of coffee is not going to do it Make sure you're drinking a lot of fluid throughout the day. Caffeine is addictive. Ooh, this is a good, good one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Caffeine is not considered an addicting substance. There is a need to use it oftentimes uh, routinely to maintain alertness, especially in the morning or right upon rising. But at the end of the day, it's considered that your physical dependence on caffeine as a substance is not so severe to truly call it an addiction. If you were to go cold turkey with your coffee intake, as much as that scares you, you'd feel horrible for about a day or two, lasting for an additional week, you would feel off, but then you'd find yourself back to a new normal. And so, no, caffeine is not necessarily an addictive substance. Caffeine is short acting. There's no danger in going, you know, completely cold turkey from drinking caffeine every day, um, you know, multiple cups to just stopping. Having more than one cup of coffee a day is bad for you. Mm. I'd say that's definitely a myth. The they said more than 80 cup coffee is dangerous. So one or two cup is <laughs> no, my friends. The general thought is that if you're consuming 400 milligrams or less of caffeine in a day, that's a very safe amount for you to consume. Now what you have to remember is what's in a cup may differ depending on exactly how big that cup is yes. and exactly what type of... This is like my mocha pot, okay. I brew my coffee like this. By the way, yes, um, it changes uh, which beans you use, which amounts you drink and which additives you add. But okay, this is impossible to drink those much coffee to harm your body. But of course, you have to trust your doctor, your gastrologist or something. <laughs> okay. Of caffeine preparation you're drinking. So you want to define what a cup is. Typically, it's eight fluid ounces. You can have many of those before you run into that 400 level, yeah. which is considered a nice low level that you can reach every day. Well, not all things are equal. It applies to different people. So if you're pregnant, for instance, if you... Oh, no, I'm not pregnant. Not now, at least. Maybe in the future, but not now. My career is more important right now. You may have certain heart conditions or gastrointestinal conditions, then those kind of rules may vary. And you may have a recommendation from your physician that you may be drinking much less than that, if at all. So all my patients who are about to show me this video, stop. Uh, this applies to you. For different reasons, you can have that fourth cup, but maybe when you're feeling better, we'll talk about it. You won't be able to sleep if you have caffeine at night. I'm gonna say this is a myth. So when I drink coffee at night, nothing happens. The way that caffeine affects you and your brain really varies from person to person. So we can't have this blanket statement saying, you know, you can't drink caffeine or coffee before bedtime. Uh, in this time, I want to add something uh, from my experience. Uh, when I was drinking coffee uh, in the past, uh, I was using Arabica beans. This is the high quality beans. And even if I drink the coffee at night, it not affects me. But after the economic crisis in Turkey and we are really in bad situation, uh, I choose some uh, economic beans, 
uh, which means robusta coffee is the low quality uh, much more caffeine includes when i uh, drink this coffee in the night they affected my sleep maybe not only coffee maybe uh, i had some other issues i can't remember i don't know but uh, i couldn't sleep clearly so just uh, i want to add that maybe the beans can be affect your uh, sleep so part of the reason why people can drink caffeine at different hours of the day has a lot to do with how you metabolize it in your body. And that is in large part due to genetics. It's good to note that uh, caffeine as a molecule has a half-life of five hours. What does that mean? It means that five hours after you consume it, you'll just have about 50% of that cup of coffee left in your body. The one thing we will say is that drinking a lot of caffeine, especially close to bedtime, will probably affect your sleep health. You might find that you have a less amount of sleep per night or less amount of hours getting that good, deep, refreshing REM sleep. But again, everyone metabolizes things slightly differently. Yes. It's not consumed in a vacuum, right? There's so many other things going on in our day to day that yes. affect how tired we are, how alert we need to be. And yes. So if you've been up all day and you've exerted a lot of energy and you're just tired and fatigued, you will still crash and go to bed. Caffeine can mess with your heart rhythm. I am going to say myth to this. This is actually an issue that has been studied extensively. There was a recently performed study where they looked at a community-based cohort of over 30,000 people. And what they found was that caffeine intake in moderate levels did not increase risk of arrhythmias. In fact, they found that for every additional cup you had, you had a 3% decrease in your likelihood of having an arrhythmia. Sometimes people can get heart palpitations or feel like their heart is racing, which we call tachycardia, right? And that can happen with caffeine. Um, and there can also even be a transient increase in your blood pressure. But these things are not long lasting. These things aren't dangerous. And what's even more good news is that for habitual coffee drinkers or caffeine consumers, that effect eventually wears away. So you know, when we think about abnormal heart rhythms or dangers to the heart, we actually see that caffeine is protective. Talk to your cardiologist. But thus far, myth. Ooh, this is a hard one. Tea is healthier than coffee. I'm going to call it a myth. Okay. And the reason why I call it a myth is that you cannot say tea is healthier than coffee as a blanket statement, and it always holds true. If you dump tons of sugar in your tea, you cannot still say that that's yes. a healthy beverage. And then to balance that, coffee can be very healthy as well. Coffee so the important thing is additives you add your beverage, tea or coffee. This is healthy beverages, but if you don't add any harmful additives, so. <laughs> tea again is a major source of antioxidants for Americans. We don't perhaps eat enough fruits and vegetables. And so we end up getting a lot of things that we should be getting from fruits and vegetables, believe it or not, from our coffee plant. What we also need to understand is that I think there's a lot of more robust data for coffee, and it's been studied a little bit more, and we can make more kind of concrete statements about its benefits. So it's not to say that tea benefits aren't there, or that we know for a fact that tea is healthier than coffee, because we don't. But right now, you know, we have to say that this is a myth. If you're trying to drink one over another for health benefits, and it's about the caffeine, you know, I think it's comparable. I think that there's this misconception that there's not as much caffeine in tea, which is quite false. And it all depends on exactly what tea and what coffee you're talking about. We're trying to use generic terms for very different substances. Yes. You have teas like Roboy's teas and teas that are green teas and earl teas, they're all very different with different components. In general, they tend to represent a good healthy source of yes. caffeine and other substances, but so do coffees too. The way you prepare your coffee doesn't matter. Myth. There's so many different ways to prepare coffee and it does matter in terms of how much caffeine results in that cup. So if you look at this little graphic, uh, it shows you a number of things that might affect the amount of caffeine that's in your brewed beverage. What's the particle size? What's the brew time? How hot is the water you're using for your brewing? And then also, how much are you diluting your actual caffeine in your content? You tend to have a fairly high quantity of caffeine in your coffee pods because it's ground really finely. The temperature used to brew it is very hot. And so a lot of caffeine can be extracted up to 75 to 150 milligrams per cup. For your French press, although there is a 
prolonged brewing time. Oftentimes, the actual size of the grinding is very coarse, and so that limits the amount of caffeine that you'll find in your fresh press. And also where it comes from, too. I think where the bean actually originates yes. can affect how much. Yes, this is important. This is what I uh, telling you the Arabica and Robusta coffee beans. This is important much caffeine is present. So at the end of the day, I think what we learned is that caffeine actually can be very good for you, despite all the myths that we've heard all our lives. I think that some people have guilt around drinking caffeine and coffee, but there's so many benefits, very few risks. Of course, it's important to talk to your doctor yes. about what's best for you, but ultimately, we don't want to deprive people of something that they love because the benefits are abound, and you know what? It really tastes great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I really loved this video, my friends. I really loved their style, their positive way of speaking. I really like that. And like, here's right. Think positive, my friends. Think positive. Um, otherwise, if um, your doctor is, don't say that you don't need to drink coffee. So you just enjoy it because it tastes beautiful and it's not harmful and it's good. Just enjoy just think positive because uh, the harmful thing if you think bad you call bad things so don't call bad things think positive think good and be happy my friends have a nice day and i hope to see you in the next videos until then please take care of yourself have a nice day and thank you bye bye